Hello grade 9 students, in this video I will be guiding you step by step uh, to solve the Lebanese biology official exercise along with some explanation. Before we start, number one, please mind the time. Uh, our Lebanese exams, biology exams, uh, have a duration of one hour and are made up of four exercises, which means that you can spend 15 minutes plus or minus to solve an exercise. Number two, I'd like you to read the given carefully, and when I say the given, it means reading the title, the text, the figure, and I recommend that you circle the uh, important key terms and keywords and think about it before you start the questions. When you do this, you will be brainstorming and ready for the questions. While reading the questions, please read the whole question. Most of the students end up reading part of the question, answering part of the answer, taking part of the mark. Second, please make sure you understand the objective of the question. What are they asking for? Part three, please pay attention to the action verbs. The action verb is going to give you the direction what you are supposed to write. <coughs> this is the exercise that we're going to solve in this video. The title says transmission of hereditary character in a tomato plant. So it's clear for me that we're talking about genetics and I'm going to see how are the phenotype or the characteristic transmitted from one generation to the other? I want you to pause the video, read the given, the title, the text, and the figure, and circle the important key terms according to you and start thinking what do these key terms mean? Okay, so let's start with the first word which is character. So character in this exercise shows that the uh, two tomato plants, one has short stem character while the other one has long stem character. Students, I want you to remember character, characteristic, trait, phenotype all have the same meaning. And I want you to remember that these phenotypes are determined because of our genes. And these genes are inherited from our parents. So we inherit chromosomes having genes from our cutting genes from our parents and according to these genes we're going to express certain phenotypes um, now uh, we're talking about an autosomal transmission over here so uh, for every gene every person is going to have two alleles one paternal and one maternal if the two alleles are the same this person is going to be uh, pure if the two alleles are different, this person is going to be hybrid. Um, okay, now we go for the second word, which is cross. Cross means fertilization, and fertilization is the process of union between the sperm and ovule or oocyte to produce a zygote that becomes later an offspring. So, um, uh, we're talking about sperm and oocyte. Sperm and oocyte, these are gametes, these are haploid cells. So I'm not going to see two alleles in these cells, instead I'm going to see one allele. So each gamete contains one chromosome uh, of each type having one allele because gametes are produced by a process known as meiosis, which is a reductional cell division, where during anaphase one, the two sister, cro the, sorry, the homologous chromosomes separate, and then during anaphase one, uh, anaphase two, sister chromatids separate. So the gametes have one chromosome of each type, made up of one chromatid carrying one allele of each gene. More details about this will be explained in details in another video. Now, before start, uh, okay, uh, excuse me, I didn't finish reading the uh, given yet. I finished the title, the text, I still have the schematic picture. So looking at the schematic picture, I can see that uh, the tomato, first tomato plant, short stem crossed with another tomato plant, long stem, both are pure, of pure race. Pure, yani, they have the same allele, each parent has the same allele. Uh, the first parent has the two alleles SS, while the other parent has the two alleles LL. Even if it's not mentioned that these two parents are pure, I can know by looking at the first generation, at their offsprings. Since all the offspring, 100% of the offspring, the high number of offspring, uh, or repeating the cross more than once, so when, when we have enough data, 
and all the offspring have the same phenotype then the parents are pure pure parents will produce the offspring all having the same phenotype and having the same phenotype shows that the parents are pure i don't care what the phenotype is what matters is that they have a uniform phenotype because we already know that each um, child is going to take one allele from each parent so it's going to take s from this parent and l from this parent so it's, if it's going only going all of them are going to have the same phenotype then each parent has only one type of allele and thus each parent is pure okay before we start solving let's do some recall so you can see in the two pictures above we have a homologous pair what do we mean by homologous pair we mean two chromosomes what's the origin of the homologous pair one maternal from the mother and one paternal from the father how do I, we arrange the homologous pair we arrange the homologous pair or we say that these uh, two chromosomes represent a, a homologous pair depending on uh, size they have to have the same size same position of the centromere and same banding pattern a centromere is what joins the two sister chromatids together and the banding pattern show the positions of the gene it doesn't matter if the homologous pair or if the chromosomes of the homologous pair are made up of uh, two sister chromatid or one sister chromatid they are still homologous pair So we're still recalling and we're remembering the definition of the gene and the allele the gene is a sequence or a piece or a fragment of dna that's going to code for a protein and this protein is going to determine a certain phenotype so our phenotypes are depend are determined by our gene and what's the relation between the dna and the phenotype the relation is a protein uh, where genes are translated or expressed in the form of protein and this protein will control a phenotype this detail will be expressed or explained in details in another video as we said before we're talking about autosomal inheritance so for every gene we're going to have two alleles one paternal one maternal these two alleles are found on uh, two chromosomes of a homologous pair and they could be the same and they or different if they are the same because if the two copies of the gene or the two alleles are the same then this person is homozygous or pure if the two alleles are different then the person is heterozygous or hybrid in the picture you can see example of blood type we all know that um, uh, I'm talking about the ABO uh, phenotype so the ABO gene is found on chromosome 9 and uh, we human we have uh, two two chromosome nine one paternal one maternal we call them homologous pairs because they have the same size same position of the centromere and same banding pattern um, now if um, and pay attention as the picture shows that the genes or the position of the gene is the same on the uh, two homologous uh, chromosomes um, so if I, I inherited a chromosome carrying allele A maternal and another chromosome carrying allele A paternal, then my two alleles are the same, so I am a pure person or homozygous. However, if one allele is A while the other allele is O, so I am a heterozygous person or hybrid. So now we're ready to go to the question after we read the given and we brainstormed and we're ready to start solving the exercise. Question number one is translate um, the schematic figure into a text and we have to use the legend. The word translate or the action verb translate means changing from one form to other. It could be a table, graph, figure or uh, paragraph and we have to tr translate it from one form into the other. Uh, what is important is that uh, you have to pay attention not to justify and not to add acquired knowledge. So this is a bonus question. Simply read the given in any form and change it to another form. So I come to this schematic figure and I have to use the legend. The legend are circled in red. X means cross. Now although cross also means fertilization i'm not supposed to use the word fertilization i use the words given in the legend 
the arrow means obtain of course i can use obtained as obtained obtains i can change the tense and change it from passive to active but i have to use the word obtain i cannot use the word give um f1 stands for first generation so i'm i'm ready it's simple i'm just reading the picture and changing it into a text so i can simply start uh, a tomato plant with short stem of pure race is crossed with a tomato plant with long stem of pure race point this cross obtains uh f1 100 percent tomato plant having short stem so as simple as that here is another way of answering it so this is a bonus question this question is important because it helps the student read the given now before solving number two i'd like to make another recall regarding the dominant and the recessive allele as mentioned before, being pure, yani the two alleles are the same. Being hybrid, yani the two alleles of the same gene are different. Now, to know which one of these alleles is dominant and recessive, I look at the hybrid state. The allele that is expressed in the hybrid state is the dominant one. The allele that was masked in the hybrid state is the recessive one. So recessive alleles are only expressed in pure state. If they are found in hybrid, they're going to be masked by the dominant allele. Again, I go back to the example of blood type. So if a person has two alleles O and O, he's going to express phenotype blood type O. However, if one of his alleles is O while the other allele is A, then A is dominant allele, it will be expressed, allele O will be masked. So that's why allele A is dominant and allele O is recessive. Uh, dominant alleles are written one letter capitalized, while recessive alleles are written as one letter and in lowercase. So question number two was to know, to indicate the dominant allele and to justify it. So I go back to the given. I had a pure parent short stem, another pure parent long stem, and all the F1 were short. As said before, uh, the children or F1 will inherit one allele short from this parent, one allele long from this parent. However, they expressed only the short. The long was found on the chromosomes, but it was not expressed as a phenotype. So the answer would be short as dominant because the F1 will inherit one allele from each of the pure parents. They expressed only the short and they masked the long. So it's simple. Remember that the children will inherit one allele from each parent and in this case they because the parents are pure they inherited smooth from uh, sorry small from one and long from one so on their chromosomes on their homologous chromosome they have one allele s one allele l but they were all short this means short was expressed and l was masked so l is recessive question number three was to uh, designate symbols you can choose any symbol you want make sure that the dominant is written uppercase while the recessive is written uh, lowercase uh, you can use uh, i'm going to use here capital s for short and small l for long so i'm going to say let capital s be the dominant allele coding for the short stem and let small l be the recessive allele coding for long stem now the last part was factorial analysis um, there are many uh, i'm gonna uh, upload a video talking and explaining the factorial analysis in details but a quick uh, reminder when we're doing factorial analysis we have to state the parents phenotype then the parents genotype then the parents gamete and then we do a table of cross to predict or to get the possible genotypes of the offspring and then we decide what is their uh, phenotype so let's go and read the uh, question 
Upon crossing a tomato plant of F1 having short stem with a tomato plant having long stem, we obtained F2 or second generation. Now, plants with short stem, I can't know their genotype because short is dominant and it can appear in pure and hybrid. So, this plant could have SS genotype or it could have SL genotype. However, the other tomato plant lung, and remember, a lean lung is recessive, so I'm definitely sure that its genotype is LL, because recessive LEs are only expressed in pure state. So I know that the lung has genotype LL, but my problem is the short. That's why I look at the offspring. In the offspring, they said we have two phenotypes. Having two phenotypes shows that short is not pure. If they all had the same phenotype, then short would be pure. But here we have two phenotypes. And one of the 50% of the tomato plants are long. These long plants, for them to express the long phenotype, should have inherited one long allele from each parent. This shows that the parent with the short stem was a carrier for the long allele. So I write number step one. Now I can write the factorial analysis. I remember the phenotypes are written between brackets. So one short, I write it capital S between bracket. The other one is long small L between brackets. The parent's genotype, as said before, um, the short is hybrid because uh, it had offsprings long so this uh, tomato plant with long stem should have inherited one allele L from each parent so the short stem parent was a carrier of an L allele the other one is recessive uh, is long and L is recessive so its genotype is definitely LL now I go to write the parent's gamete hybrid parent short has two possibilities of gamete either s or l and they are 50 percent while the long uh, tomato plant will produce one type of gamete long so here students remember a person a pure person will have one type of gamete while a hybrid person will produce two types of gametes each ha each being 50 percent or half half I've written the pheno, I've written the genotype, and I've written the gametes. Now I put them in a table. So one of the parent is hybrid, two gametes 50-50. The other parent is pure, one gamete 100%. So what I do in the table of cross, or what does the, what the table of cross resembles, it resembles fertilization. So in fertilization, I simply unite the sperm of the ovule. So the first gamete contains S. The other gamete from the other parent contains L. So this uh, uh, offspring or this child, uh, as shown in the blue circle, will have a genotype as L. Now, if the two gametes uniting are L and L, then this child will have genotype LL. The question was to verify the phenotype. So um, SL is going to uh, represent uh, or express a smooth because S is a dominant allele, L is a recessive allele, so S allele will be expressed, L allele will be masked. Uh, the other one is a pure state, so it's going to be long. So we had 50% short stem and 50% long stem, similar to what was mentioned in the exercise. Thus, my experimental results are confirmed. Thank you the video is done hopeful hope it was useful and follow me in other videos